Well, good evening, everybody. Michael Norwood here. And today's talk is labeled the scientific experiment that shatters your greatest fears. I'm so excited about this because uh, I was reading this neurology book and they were listing one experiment after another about fear and about the amygdala. The amygdala is in our midbrain and it mediates fear, it mediates anger, it mediates aggression. And I came upon this one experiment, I was so incredibly excited about this because what the experiment revealed was essentially the scientific proof of something that I've always said. And what that is, is that trust is self-fulfilling and fear is self-fulfilling. Meaning when we're in trust, when we trust, events tend to work out in a way to our favor that our trust actually manifests on a physical level to the point where we get what we were in faith about, in trust about. Whereas when we're in fear, it's like an echo chamber. That fear comes back to us and whatever we fear, as the saying goes in the Bible, that that which I fear has come upon me. And so this is this is what the, the, the experiment was. It was a little Pac-Man. It, it took some volunteers and <laughs> most likely you would not have wanted to volunteer for it. What they did, they put the volunteers in a magnetic resonance imaging machine and they gave them a little Pac-Man like game they are represented by a little dot and they're in a maze and they have to try to escape the pac-man what happened as they're about to get eaten by the pac-man they're given a little electric shock and measuring that brainwave function what they discovered when they get that electric shock the amygdala fires and when that amygdala gets triggered it's four things the amygdala is fight flight fear or the other option besides fight or flight is you can freeze. Okay, so when that response gets triggered, what happens, the prefrontal cortex, this area here, our strategy making part of our brain, our self-reflective uh, part of our brain, our rational brain gets turned off. From an evolutionary standpoint, the reason that is, is because as an example, you touch a hot stove, there's no thinking process involved. You immediately go into autonomic function where your hand removes and likely that amygdala gets stimulated. If you're getting chased by a lion, you suddenly see a lion coming at you. Very likely that amygdala, that fear response is going to be triggered. And the reason for it is survival, okay? However, what happens is it turns off the ability to strategize. And this is how the experiment went. Every time that the little Pac-Man caught the person represented by the little dot, they'd get a, a little higher electrical voltage each time. And so what was so extraordinary in this experiment was that the amygdala started a fire when the, when the Pac-Man was farther and farther away. In other words, when that fight or flight response was not necessary yet. And so think about this, the fear that we have from past experience, how that tends to cause us to act in that fight or flight or freeze type of behavior. And what's most important, it's how our words and how we phrase things can trigger that fear response, that freeze response, that fight or flight response. What I was angling towards, when we want to speak our truth, because this is what the course is about, and this is why it was such a revelation, this experiment. When we speak in a my way or the highway, or we draw a line in the sand, or we tell somebody the way it is, or we're a straight shooter, or we, in the lingo of the day, we take the bull by the horns, well, we are triggering that self-protective mechanism in the other person because they don't necessarily, they most likely don't see things the way we do. And if we're in a mode where we need to speak our truth and we just come out straight shooter, a la John Wayne, a la Clint Eastwood, Arnold Schwarzenegger, all these American folklore type of heroes from Hollywood, well, it looks really good on the big screen. And, and in the short run, it does accomplish its purpose. But in the long run, because somebody starts to associate us with threatening them in some way, threatening their belief systems via that amygdala being, being triggered, what happens, 
they no longer are open. They have gone into their shell. They have frozen their fight or flight. They're ready. I mean, just think of Democrats trying to speak with Republicans nowadays, Republicans trying to speak with Democrats. It's gotten to a point where we just can't do it because everybody is so self-protective of their own turf. So rather than that my way or the highway or that fifth phase, what we call it, hitting the nail on the head, and of course, with the five phases, even hitting the nail on the head, we have a very graceful way of doing it that doesn't trigger that amygdala, doesn't trigger that freeze, fight, flight, fear response. But when you just start off, right off the bat, hit the nail on the head, you trigger that self-protective, that autonomic, that prehistoric, that reptilian, that dinosaur brain. Whereas when we use the five phases, when we hold the space initially, we just listen. When the, so the person doesn't feel threatened. When we speak their truth first, complimenting them, thanking them, showing something we appreciate about them, saying, hey, the same thing has happened to me, showing we're in alignment with them. When we give them a chance to speak our truth for us, phase three, and when we ask questions of grace, phase four, so we, our honest curiosity, this doesn't trigger that amygdala. What it does is it triggers the prefrontal cortex. It triggers the empathy centers in the prefrontal cortex. It triggers everything that opens them up to want to hear more from us. Whereas it's a paradox. When we come out guns a-blazing, you know, locked and loaded, ready to speak our truth in a classical manner, you know, I'm going to tell you the way it is, like it or not, it accomplishes the opposite effect. Rather than creating a friend, we create somebody who is an opponent now somebody who's an adversary. And boy, oh boy, are we seeing it in our country right now, more than ever.